Hello and welcome to watching NDTV 24/7. I'm Vedant Agarwal. Our top story: the government has called for a special session of the parliament to be held from September the 18th to the 22nd. And well, Union uh, Minister Prahlad Joshi posted on uh, X, a social media site, adding that there will be five sittings. He further said in the post, I mean, Amrit Kaur, looking forward to having a fruitful discussion and debate in Parliament. But the surprise announcement on a day the opposition parties are meeting in Mumbai has sparked many speculations and conjectures over what bills may be brought in for passage. There's no announcement yet from the government side. Wasidha has more details. The centre has convened a special session of the parliament for five days from September 18 to September 22. There is no official word on the agenda of the session yet, but it is interesting because it will be held just days after the much-awaited G20 leaders summit. The special session of the parliament will be held a day after the Vishwakarma Yojana, the government scheme for a mega outreach to OBC communities, will be formally launched on September 17th. That also happens to be the Prime Minister's birthday. Now, what is a special session of the parliament? There are three parliamentary sessions held in a year, budget, monsoon and winter sessions. A special session of the parliament is dedicated to considering a specific bill or looking at an issue of public importance. In 2017, a special midnight session was convened for the passage of the GST. But that was a joint sitting of the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. A special six-day session was convened in 1997 to commemorate India's 50th year of independence. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahala Joshi has said that this special session will have five sittings and in the middle of Amrit Kaal, the government is looking forward to having fruitful discussions. Remember, this is also the year that marks the end of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahatsav, which is India's 75 years of freedom. Of course, some clarity on the agenda of this special session is expected next week. There is also socio-political context this time to the special session of the parliament as this is an election year and the BJP at the centre is working towards fulfilling many of its promises made to see another term. Social engineering efforts are being made and there is also talk about making elections tighter and not prolonged. On the last day of the session, monsoon session, two important bills, one that does away with the IPC and CRPC and brings in a new framework and another one that makes fundamental changes in the way election commissioners are appointed were introduced. There is also a lot of talk about the Uniform Civil Code, but government sources have made it clear that this bill will be brought in only after wide consultations. From the point of view of governance and political moves, this is high action time for political parties, particularly the BJP, which gives credence to the speculation that the special session of the parliament this time could also see the introduction of key bills. And well, the opposition has hit out of the government's surprise announcement. Priyanka Chaturvedi of the Shiv Sena Uddhav faction has said that, well, it's extremely unfortunate that the government has called for this five-day parliament session while the country will be celebrating Ganesh Chaturthi. Listen in to what she had to say. मैडम जिस तरह की खबर सामने निकल कर आ रही है कि एक स्पेशल सेशन जो है वो केंद्र सरकार बुला रही है आपने भी उस पर ट्वीट किया है क्या लगता है क्या पैनिक में है सर बिल्कुल जब देखते हैं जब किसी की मौत सामने आने को मैं मौत इसलिए नहीं कह रही हूँ कि कुछ गलत तरीके से यानी जो डाइंग मोमेंट्स होते हैं सरकार खत्म होने पर आ रही होती है और उनको यकीन हो गया है कि वो वापस नहीं आ रहे हैं तो अपने मनमानी काम करती है तो ये वो छटपटाहट है ये वो घबराहट है क्या आपको ऐसी कोई जानकारी की वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन टाइप का कुछ ये करने की तैयारी में अगर इस तरीके की तैयारी करते हैं तो मैं आपको एक चीज से विश्वास से बोल सकती हूँ ये सिर्फ हम लोग विपक्षी दल नहीं उसका विरोध करेंगे देश हित में सोचने वाले सभी जनता भी इसका विरोध करेगी क्योंकि मैं बताती हूँ क्या उन्होंने इलेक्शन कमीशन से कोई राय मशौरा किया है क्या उन्होंने सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेज से राय मशौरा किया है क्या उन्होंने स्टेट गवर्नमेंट से मशौरा किया है आप किस आधार पर ये निर्णय ले सकते हैं और बुला सकते हैं so, well, the special parliament session has indeed become the latest flashpoint between the opposition and the government. But this, amid the leaders of uh, Opposition India Alliance uh, meeting for the third time in Mumbai. And, uh, well, on uh, the first day of the meeting, an informal dinner was also hosted by Udhav Thakre. While uh, tomorrow, uh, the leaders will get down to business, deciding on the logo, the common minimum program, and even a convener 
could be announced on the second day of that big opposition huddle. So far, the leaders have said they've come together to save the constitution and democracy in the country. But the finer tuning is yet to be done as challenges remain many. Seat sharing is going to be one important issue. And after this informal dinner, what has come out is that uh, the opposition alliance has decided to finalize seat sharing by September. This is going to be uh, an important pain point uh, for the opposition, given that they have many differences when it comes to states like Punjab and West Bengal. Uh, then if you talk about the entire meeting agenda, that has been the top agenda uh, for the 28 parties who have gathered in the India Alliance and are meeting in Mumbai. Today was an informal meeting which happened and the formal meeting will happen tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And yes, seat sharing is one of the biggest issues which is being raised because they know that in 2024, this might be an issue which might lead to uh, uh, several hurdles in all these parties who have come together. So they are trying to address this issue as soon as possible. Uh, number two, they will also decide the future course of action. A common minimum program is going to be decided through which uh, all these alliance partners will work. They will decide what will be the issues and the campaign, how to take it forward, what to do next. So these are the things uh, that is going to be discussed. Uh, in the meeting which is going to happen, the formal meeting is, is expected to happen from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Remember that the first meeting which happened in Patna, it was an ice-breaking meeting where these parties came together. At that time, the number of parties which come together were around 17. The second meeting happened in Bangalore, where the name India of this alliance was decided. At that time, the number of parties which came together uh, was, uh, from, uh, rose from 17. To 26, and now right. that this meeting is happening in Mumbai, there are 28 parties in total. And now tomorrow we will also be seeing some more things happening. Since that uh, there is an India name, there would be uh, the logo of the India which would be released, and also in the press conference which is scheduled for 4 p.m., they tell us what is going to be their future course of action and how will they take things ahead. So it remains to be seen what actually comes out on the second day of the big opposition meeting. But amid the opposition's effort of forming a common front against the BJP, uh, well, the big question is, what is BSP leader Mayavati's real game plan? She has said that I'm going to go it alone and I'm neither going to side with India or the NDA. But uh, we try and decode her real game plan when it comes to the 2024 elections. Saurabh Shukla sent us this report. The third India Alliance meeting but still no sign of Mayavati, whose party has 10 MPs in the Lok Sabha from Uttar Pradesh. Key India Alliance leader Sharad Pawar claims Mayavati is more inclined towards the BJP. But Mayavati hit back posting on social media site X, formerly Twitter, that both the BJP and the Opposition Alliance are anti-poor and anti-backward. We can't come to 80% of the people. If we are here, we will be here, and if we are here, we will be here, and if we are here, we will be here. But we will be here, we will be here, we will be here, we will be here. Mayavati recently repeated her Go It Alone on 2024 stand. The BSP chief had joined hands with her arch-rival, Samajwadi Party's Akhilesh Yadav, in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, winning 10 of the 80 Lok Sabha seats in UP, while the SP won only 5. Right after the results, Mayavati broke her ties with Akhilesh Yadav. Mayavati fought the 2022 Assembly elections alone and lost badly. She got only one seat out of the 403 in the UP Assembly. पिछले दिनों कई बड़े फैसले ऐसे किए मायावती ने जो भाजपा के पक्ष में थे मोदी सरकार के पक्ष में थे तो उनका वोट बैंक सिकुड़ता जा रहा है और यह धारणा कि वो बीजेपी की बीटी में मायावती को बहुत नुकसान पहुंचा रही है और मुझे लगता है कि अगर मायावती अकेले लड़ने का फैसला लेती हैं तो यह उनके राजनीतिक जीवन की सबसे बड़ी भूल साबित होने वाली है अब देखना ये होगा कि मायावती क्या-क्या रणनीति अपनाती हैं even though Mayavati has been speaking against the Congress, UP Congress sources say the top leadership of the party has sent messages to Mayavati and UP several times for an alliance. Now, see, this is the Rashtri Nitru. We don't have any information about this. I just want to say that Mayavati and the rest of the people 
जो समाज की स्थितियाँ उसको देखते हुए वो आना चाहिए इंडिया गठबंधन में और बाकी चीज़ें राष्ट्रीय नेतृत्व से बात चल रही होगी तो उसकी मुझे जानकारी Currently, Mayawati is going to contest alone in the upcoming assembly elections of Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. And well, moving now to the other big story, the centre told the Supreme Court that elections could be conducted in Jammu and Kashmir any time now, but the decision lies with the Election Commission and the State Poll Panel. Reiterating, however, that the Union Territory status for Jammu and Kashmir is temporary, and that the central government said that it cannot uh, give the exact time frame when the Jammu and Kashmir's uh, statehood can be restored. The Constitution Bench is hearing multiple petitions challenging changes to Article 370. Arvind has more details on the centre's stand. During the hearing of a uh, police challenging Article uh, 370 abrogation in Supreme Court, uh, today Centre told the uh, Supreme Court that the government is ready to hold elections in Jammu and Kashmir any time now. And Centre also told Supreme Court that the updation uh, or the updating the voter list process is almost over, and then it's up to the Election Commission to conduct elections. Whereas the Centre is any uh, Centre is ready to hold election to hold elections any time now. Also, very importantly, on the second question regarding the the restoration of statehood for which center told the supreme court that uh, though uh, the state home minister has already uh, stated on the floor of the house in both the houses in parliament that the uh, uh, union territory of jammu and kashmir is a temporary uh, 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 temporary status and then uh, the statehood will have to be uh, restored but in this particular case a uh, center could not give a time frame within which the state court could be restored in jammu and kashmir though a uh, center said that the process is underway and it's progressing but the center Uh, couldn't give a time frame uh, on which the statehood will be restored in Jammu and Kashmir. But when it comes to Ladakh, uh, Centre has clearly told the Supreme Court that Ladakh will continue to remain as a union territory, but the statehood will be restored in Jammu and Kashmir. But the Centre couldn't give a time frame. But when it comes to elections, the Centre has told that they are ready. But uh, the ball is with the Election Commission, and the Election Commission will have to announce the elections in Jammu and Kashmir. So the centre, in a sense, reiterating its stand on Jammu and Kashmir's transition to statehood. But how did it actually play out in court? Well, there was a heated argument between Solicitor General Tushar Mehta and senior advocate Kapil Sibal during the hearing. Sibal strongly opposed the government's argument that there were zero organised bands in Jammu and Kashmir since 2018. Actions most were stone pelting incidents and <laughs> regular call of band or hartal. So that means hospitals, schools. Uh, every institution my lord where a common man is concerned lord from 2018 in 2018 the stone pelting was 1767 it is nil now not just because of effective policing or security personnel but because of various steps my lord like uh, gainfully employing the youth etc my lord they were uh, misled by the secessionist forces by the forces my lord outside the country etc and organized bands which were in 28 52 instances organized band call of band by secessionist forces Nil. how many, how many? Uh, in 18 they were 52 now it is nil they are trying to show as to how this enormous change has taken place for the benefit of the people of jammu and kashmir if you have 5000 people under house arrest and 144 throughout the state there can be no ban so let's let's not my request to your lordships is please don't enter into this arena because we will have to counter it with all kinds of facts malas which i don't think should is is necessary for this court what the solicitor was saying is that the road map to full statehood would take a little time that's obvious right now that they are the, the, the develop there is his uh, his submission is that right now development work is taking place some stability has to be brought about this is not a permanent arrangement namely the ut status they envisage that it will be a movement from ut to statehood again we can't give you a fixed point of time when we will restore statehood but they have told us the process which they are following And well, uh, staying with news uh, from the Supreme Court, the name of the Supreme Court is now being misused to steal people's personal details and confidential data. The Registry of the Supreme Court has issued an advisory and warned people about the scam as well. In fact, it also said that it's been made aware of a phishing attack in which a fake website impersonating the official uh, Supreme Court website has surfaced. So the well, as the cyber crime and its nuisance has spared no institution. 
And well, India's uh, GDP numbers for uh, April June quarter are now out, and they've uh, seen a big jump, a growth of 7.8 percent during the initial quarter of the fiscal year. And the growth of 7.8 percent has surpassed the previous quarter increase of 6.1 percent. And services sector is really driving this growth, uh, with the highest uh, GDP growth there. And uh, it was marginally lower though than the RBI's projection of 8 percent. And well, Viacom 18 has acquired the digital and TV media rights for India's home bilateral games for the period 2023 to 27. This was decided in an e-auction today conducted by the BCCI. So after a long time, one entity acquiring both the TV and digital rights uh, for uh, BCCI. So uh, something that has been applauded by uh, Jay Shah as well. Jay Shah said that we welcome our new partnership. We'll take a short break now. News continues on the other side. Welcome back. The big finale of the G20, the Heads of State Summit, will be held uh, next week. And Delhi is all decked up for it. We took a trip uh, to Delhi and also uh, all the places that have been refurbished and revamped. We also get you a sneak peek into what's on the menu for the global leaders. Here's a report. Over 1,000 special commandos spread across the capital. Chopper landing drills on hotel tops and paramilitary preps at key locations. The national capital has turned into a fortress for the big G20 finale. That will see more than 15 heads of state in Delhi in the largest and grandest G20 summit ever. As we travel through the decked up lanes of Delhi, with final touches now being given, a glimpse into the mega makeover ahead of the summit next week. I come to you from right outside one of the entry gates of the Grand Bharat Mandapam where uh, the G20 Heads of State Summit uh, will be hosted in just days from now. And here you can see final touches are being given right outside. Uh, the G20 uh, banner has been installed here as well. A new fountain as well has been installed, you know, especially for uh, the G20 Heads of State Summit. Uh, in fact, there you can see how uh, PWD officials from the national capital also supervising. One important aspect of India's G20 presidency has been to showcase our rich cultural past to the world. You can see all these walls, this is a railway underpass, they've been adorned with paintings of uh, various historical books like the Ramayana and Mahabharat. In fact, not just its cultural past, but also the fact that India has, uh, you know, advanced technological systems in place as well, whether it's dams or tunnels, they've also been showcased here and a key part of Modi's cultural diplomacy, a key part of foreign policy. Well, right outside Terminal 3 of the Indira Gandhi International Airport, posters and banners have been put up. Uh, this is the approach road uh, to Terminal 3. Of course, heads of state will be traveling, traversing this road to reach the Lalit, uh, the Taj and the uh, venue of the G20 Heads of State Summit as well. An important focus has also been rebuilding of roads, approach roads particularly. Uh, this has been done at a staggering cost of lakhs of crores of rupees in the past couple of months, in fact. Uh, there you can see workers are constantly working in the heat. Very, very happy to say that 98% work has been completed. More hmm. than 100 fountains have been set up. Okay. Around 70, 75 uh, artifacts have been set up and the roads have been repaired, footpaths have been repaired, okay. green patches have been developed and more than 6 lakh spots have been put up, okay. both sides roads, okay. to give a festive look. Okay. And you can see this, now we are going to, you know, adorn the trees in this trees. fashion, these trees in this fashion also, okay. so that the when the guest arrives in Delhi, yeah. they should get a feel that Delhi is the most beautiful city in the world. Delhi is the most beautiful city. At the Taj Palace and the Lalit in Delhi, grand presidential suites getting ready to host top world leaders. Special chefs have been brought in to put together a lavish spread. पिछले छह महीने से हम जो तैयारी कर रहे थे कि मिलेट का तड़का हम अपने विदेशी मेहमानों को कैसे परोसेंगे तो उसी के ध्यान में रखते हुए मैंने कुछ डिशेस बनाई हैं जो कि पूरा का पूरा मिलेट रिलेटेड है आप ये देखिए यहाँ पे एक फ्रूट सलाद है जिसमें कि मैंने पूरा मिक्स का मिलेट का तड़का यहाँ पे दिया है आप उधर 
वहाँ पे जैपनीज है मेरे पास जो कि शिराय सैलड है उसमें पूरा मिलेट ड्रेसिंग बनाया है मैंने जो यूरोप में एक काफी फेमस डिश है जिसका नाम लजानिया है उसमें भी मैंने एक मिलेट का तड़का लगा के दिया है 20,000 delegates from 19 member states, special invitees, over 40 heads of delegations. The largest ever G20 will be held at the Grand Bharat Mandapam in the heart of the national capital. This is India's big global moment as the leader of the G20 and the voice of the Global South. In New Delhi with camera person Kanan Patra, Vedant, Fundy TV. So well, the countdown to the big finale has begun. That's all that we have on this bulletin. Goodbye. Thank you.